We've got one heck of an episode for you today. You do not want to miss the Wheel of Shame later in the show. We're breaking down matchups, important injury news, everything you need to win your week. Make sure you like, subscribe, enjoy the video. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. The Fantasy Footballers Podcast. <laughs> what was that? Or is that a new musical? <laughs> it's podcast. the podcast. Yeah, a lot of people don't realize this. This is show 1491. We are nine episodes away from show 1500. Which will and be, that will be Fantasy Footballers the Musical. I mean, every show, every sitcom does contractually, if they have a long enough run, they have to do a musical episode. And one of the first songs on that episode is actually, Once Upon a Time I Sat Gabe Davis. <laughs> oh, Are you performing that one? Yeah, I am performing that. It's a solo. I'm, I'm performing that in a lot of places. Oh. Um, I have I look, look I, you know I love Gabe Davis. Mm -hmm. Uh he was uh on he's a highly drafted player for me. I've got him in several leagues and I'm with many people out there. The, the you know we said we wouldn't play him. I was a man of my word. I didn't play him. And he got 12 targets and was awesome. So I mean it, it's always tough as a fantasy manager like when you bench a guy <laughs> You right, kind of root yeah. against him, even though it's, you should not. You shouldn't. You want your player to show up. You to want to have earn made the more. right decision. Yes, that's all it is. And yeah. and look, Gabe Davis, he had a big game, nine for eighty-seven and a touchdown. It obviously, was a massive focal point for this team to not throw the ball to Diggs for, you know, every single play. I can't see a game in his game log where he's had more. Uh, he had a fourteen target game. In week 18 of 2021. Otherwise, this is his highest. That being said, this is the Gabe Davis experience. I mean, I'm looking at his player profile on our website. His consistency rating. Do you want to take a guess? I'm going to guess it's a, it's, it sounds like... F it's a D. Oh! Yeah, he's better than you thought. Wow. 29% of the time he scores more than 10 points. Last night was one of those times. And... uh. That stings when it's on the island game and you want to get off to a good start. And we look, we all said to sit him, and it didn't work out. So that that was an L. That but, well, I looked quickly through his career game log, and that appears to be his third game ever with the double digit targets. He also played ninety nine percent of snaps in the game. Khalil Shakir had a career high game. Yeah. Dalton Kincaid had a career high game. I mean, it was the what? What will the Buffalo Bills look like? Without their two go-to tight ends, because they've been you know, running a lot of 12, they basically ran 11 personnel, so that third wide receiver, and it turned into Shakir. Yeah, good point. 31 for 40 for Josh Allen. Two touchdowns through the air. Had one on the ground. Ran the ball a ton. 41 yards on the ground. It was really a, a pretty flawless performance, minus one tipped ball interception. Uh, the running game was basically non-existent you know James Cook in the end they had 14 carries but that number was very low before they started to burn the clock at the end of the game Latavius Murray looked like Latavius Murray like he shouldn't have been given goal line opportunities I mean he's 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 like a grandpa out there and like in running back age Latavius Murray is a great grandfather <laughs> yeah and yeah, James Cook sharing is, stories from days of old. Yeah, yeah, he's like he's telling James Cook how it was back in the day. It's like, James Cook is so good, you know. And it's it is. Let's talk about very the, let's talk about that f f at a high level for a second because teams, what happens is they practice and then they play like they practice. And mm -hmm. so if you go out on the practice field every week, and the goal line packages are Latavius Murray. People just need to understand they don't pivot that stuff on the fly. Very right. uh, almost never. Like if all of your goal line packages, Latavius Murray's in there, and he fails on the first one, it's not likely they're like, "Hey, James Cook, that stuff you didn't practice, like get out there." And it, it's unfortunate they have to make that change fundamentally 
at there, practice because at practice. The, the change still needs to happen. I mean, do you, do you think that, you know, uh, the San Francisco 49ers, when they're practicing their goal line packages, don't have Christian McCaffrey there in practice? No, they do because that's their best player in that situation. It, it's really frustrating when these teams, you know, especially when it's the smaller back. I, it's like this old school mentality of, yes, I need yep. a big back who can move the pile in if we're inside the five, because it's a bunch of beef boys out there, and the small guy can't get it done, and I just don't think that's remotely true. I, 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 you know, it's not like it's not very often that the play is run it up the middle, and it's a big, strong back that's just pushing the pile right. a couple extra inches. Like that happens sometimes, but that's not usually. Even when the big back scores, it's not how it happens, and that's not why it doesn't happen. It's like put your fast speedy tackle avoiding back in there and score touchdowns well Mc, Mc one of the plays that murray failed on was getting to the edge it was running out left and he wasn't fast enough it's like i like mcdermott i i do think he's a good coach but he has some unfortunate old school tendencies of like latavius murray is the goal line back not going for it on some fourth downs where you're like dude <laughs> you should you should really go for this fourth down. You have Josh Allen. It, he, no matter you want to run hit like a quarterback sneak tush push with Josh Allen. You want to have him throw, and he's like, no, nah, no, nah, we're gonna we're we're gonna surrender and punt here. Shout out to friend of the show Warren Sharp. But Bills goal line offense in the last two years number thirty two in efficiency per play, thirty one in touchdown rate, thirty first in points per drive, and Josh Allen has completed thirty four percent of goal line passes. So whatever practice you're doing is bottom of the league practice around the goal line. So uh, Rashad White was the leading receiver and runner for the Tampa Bay attack. Seven for 70 in the receiving game. Yep. Mm -hmm. Nine for 39 on the ground. No one else got involved. Chris Godwin, he broke the streak. We brought it up on uh, yesterday's show or the day before on the preview. He hadn't scored. And it was he hadn't a, scored in like 60-something receptions. It was, it, it was a pretty long streak, but his touchdown reception was... It was very nice. I it mean, was like, nice. His full arm extension almost looked like a barely fingertip grab. It was it was a great catch. And then Jason, uh, you and I are facing <laughs> off in uh, the dynasty league, and yeah. you're seven and zero. I'm six and one. Mm -hmm. These are the juggernauts of the league, and mm -hmm. I've got Josh Allen. Wow, what a performance! And then, but you know, Mike Evans. I mean, he did no targets in the second half until yeah, until he caught a touchdown off a helmet. That was pretty cool. <laughs> I was super happy. I mean. Yeah, you responded uh, with just just kind, just really kind abilities, real balance. Yeah, yeah, I'm a kind and gentle fantasy. You said manager. have a safe drive into work. <laughs> right, that's what I said. And it would be a shame if you got into a traffic accident. I mean, I don't know if I've ever been trash talked like I was last night. Yeah, I'm, I'm so bad start. I, well, yeah, you got here. <laughs> oh no! no. No, that's not what I meant. <laughs> yes, bad start to the week for me, for sure. I really want to beat you this week. Uh, anything else from this game you guys want to discuss? It was a, it was the, you know, a blowout considering it was, it was twenty-four to eighteen. It was a strange game because you, you know, we talked about is this the Bills get right game? And for the majority of the game, you're like, yeah. I mean, there was at at the beginning at least the the Bills kind of hung, or I'm sorry, the Bucks hung tight of the bend don't break give up a bunch of yardage but then stop them for a field goal and the bills were up so much it was well yeah they're definitely back but then I don't know if it was they pulled the you know like they, they stepped off the gas and thought they could just coast but it was like there was a Hail Mary the final game of the play or final play of the game was a Hail Mary that the Bill, the Bucks would have won if Godwin turned around a yeah. little earlier. He was he was there for a game winning catch, which was crazy because you go into the the fourth quarter twenty four to ten, and it just seems like it was the most lopsided game ever. I've never seen an end zone hail mary literally just land on the ground. Yeah, nobody like straight down in between a bunch. Everybody of players. forgot the ball was on the. No way. one could find. Maybe the lights were in their eyes. All right, it's Friday. Foot Clan Friday. All right, every Friday we have a giveaway for a supporter of the show over at jointhefoot.com, the illustrious, incredible Foot Clan. Today's giveaway winner is 
Password is Taco. That's the username. <laughs> Password is Taco. Okay, you, you probably don't want that as your username because now everyone knows. Uh, giving, uh, we're giving a hundred dollars to fantasychamps.com Two password is taco. Congratulations. Thank you for supporting the show. Let's talk news. News and notes from around the league presented by USAA insurance. Unnecessary drama in Miami. Tyreek Hill. I'm good, baby. He said, and, uh, really through, you know, all of our concerns into the garbage after even Tua had said, at some point, we'll get Tyreek back. That was yeah, his quote. Yeah. And Tua, he meant the next day. Tua, you're supposed to say indefinite. Right, because we We, we don't understand know. what that yeah. means. Um, yeah, the the reports were that when he got back out uh, to practice that he looked absolutely fine. He was doing his normal drills at normal speed. Uh, so there's no worries with Tyreek Hill. Nor are there with Raheem Mostert, who had the Veterans Day off and was back at practice. TJ Hawkinson upgraded to a limited practice on Thursday. It's a good sign. Mm-hmm. Here's where there is not a good sign. No, 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 no. Deontay Johnson, another DNP, the hamstring. When you hurt your hamstring mm. to the degree where you have to go on IR mm. and you're gone for a month mm. and then you come back and you hurt your hamstring again, I'm not playing I'm not playing that game. I mean, I, I, I've got him in a couple leagues. I've already made the – like this is at the stage where I have somebody else in the lineup, and if I'm pleasantly surprised today, then I can adjust. Sure. Aaron Jones returned to a limited practice. Luke Musgrave did not practice with an ankle. Packers players. Dalvin Cook talking about being traded. Good luck. Yeah, who's trading for you? They've no. watched. Bro, you got your money. Yeah, yeah, be happy. He said he's adjusting to not playing. He, it's an adjustment. Yeah. And uh, it was an adjustment that the uh, Jets needed to make to make sure he didn't play. Yeah, <sighs> keep, keep adjusting. Uh, maybe, you know what, with how he's looked, if they could trade him, the Bills would love to put him in on goal line situations. <laughs> I mean, they would just they'd be like, man, you look really slow. Let's get you, wow. let's get you in wow. there. Wow, if they traded for Dalvin Cook. <laughs> I don't think that's a 0% chance. Put the brothers together. You know who's in there on the goal line. Oh, man, yeah. Uh, Daniel Jones is out. Okay. And we've got matchups today. We'll talk about Kareem Hunt's health, Jerome Ford's health. We'll talk about Kenneth Walker and Tyler Lockett. Uh, those are today's matchup, right, Brooksy? Yes, We're talking sir. about those. And Josh Palmer. He didn't practice again. That is frightening. You are right. There's going to be a huge opportunity with QJ. I mean, they, they're they going to need someone to catch the ball. Yeah, Jalen Guyton's coming back finally. Uh, so, yeah, huge opportunity. Um, there's also uh, the news that Brock Purdy is practicing. So, What, what is going on with this? I mean, this? it was funny because it was reported that he, he's in concussion protocol and that Sam Darnold will be the starter. Um but I think maybe that – I mean, I, I, I still I, presume that's going to happen, but it isn't a 100% guarantee. I don't think it's going to happen. Right, yeah. So yeah, I think I think it's going to be Brock Purdy, and I think he had to go into protocols, but he's been out there practicing, and they're waiting for that clearance, and that might not come. That might be what he can't do, but I, I think he wants to play. Yeah. So that, that threw some cold water on our uh, DFS lineup <laughs> later <laughs> today because Sam Darnold in DFS is 4,300. Yeah. yeah. Which, which changes everything. We don't have the liberty on a Friday to put put Darnold in because we would have. You'd have to be like, if he doesn't play, I'm pivoting this to this, this to this, yeah. this to this, this to this. You know, uh, it's basically like you you're putting in Malik Cunningham of the Patriots and hoping that he gets elevated and maybe gets a snap or two. That was today's news and notes presented as always by USAA Insurance. Learn more at usaa.com/insurance. Fantasy forecast. Well, no bye weeks, so we covered a ton of matchups yesterday. So if you're looking for the Rams, Cowboys, Vikings, Packers, Falcons, Titans, Saints, Colts, Patriots, Dolphins, Jets, Giants, Jags, Steelers, Eagles, Commanders, those matchups were discussed yesterday. Today we're starting with the Houston Texans, who are three and three, taking on the only winless team in football, the Carolina Panthers, at zero and six. So, Jason, first thing, I mean, by the way, Houston, three-and-a-half-point road favorites, over-unders 43. Houston coming off the bye. Uh, both teams coming off the bye. This is a tough one for Cardinals fans because the Cardinals are one in, uh, one in six, mm -hmm. and they're the only one-win team in right. football. Carolina's the only winless team. The Cardinals have the Houston pick, mm -hmm. but if Houston wins, which is this is one of those games where – or I'm sorry, if Carolina wins, 
Cardinals slide into a tie for that first selection. Yeah, I mean, so you're rooting for. Oh, you're certainly rooting for the Carolina Panthers to win this game. <laughs> I mean, this is this would be uh, great for Cardinals fans to win. I'm really interested in this game uh, going into the bye. Frank Reich talked about um, changing uh, who's going to call plays, and I think that there's going to be some pretty wholesale changes here to the Carolina offense. Um, so this is something to keep your eye on. I don't think we pivot. You know, you're not going to take what Adam Thielen has been doing and bench him. That's that's that would be outrageous. That would be a bad process. But pay attention because if it comes out and Adam Thielen goes from you know, look, the, since week two, nine targets, fourteen, eight, thirteen, thirteen, he is getting everything. If it comes out and he's got six targets this game, then I I will take that immediately as a new normal I don't expect that to happen I but I'm going to be paying attention to it I think it's I think the fair-minded conversation around Thielen regardless of the offensive coordinator thing is just that his numbers were so outrageous mm -hmm. so I think you could make the argument that trading high on Thielen regardless of that uh, potential change is the wise thing to do he's an older player you know I can remember a couple of Larry Fitzgerald age 33 age 34 seasons where the first half of the season was on fire the second and a half the second half changed that uh, I think he's their best receiver by a lot yeah so it's hard fair. to say like their play calling is going to pivot to players that can't perform at the level that Thielen is performing at but I certainly think it means something for the running game with Chuba Hubbard Mike start of the week who has had a lot of opportunity even with Miles Sanders injury Sanders has not delivered on the hopes of the off season. So, you know, I've heard, I've seen people want to ask us questions. I mean, they've asked questions about Miles Sanders. Like, where are you with that? Is that a, you know, what if he's on your roster right now? What if you have Chuba? Because you picked him up in light of the injury. So that's very likely that there's a lot of teams with both of them. Who are you playing? I would play Chuba. If I have both, I'm going to play Chuba over Miles. Like Until Miles proves to me that he is – healthy ready to go and I mean, he's been inches sanders this year <laughs> yeah oh man go that's, ahead go ahead Boston. <laughs> that's that's rough he's the first three weeks were okay-ish for fantasy football but they really slowed down and that includes him playing through the injury so if i have to pick the two of them i'm i still have confidence in chuba so if i have the two of them that's where i'm going and my other note for the panthers would be if rookie wide receiver Jonathan Mingo is out there on the waiver wire, he's someone who I have interest in. Like Jason brought up, we have a new play caller. Things could shift around, and it's the bye week. He's a second-round wide receiver, so if this is a day-two pick going into the second half of the season. If something's going to happen with him, it this is about the time it would. I I don't know if it will for Mingo. I don't know if Bryce Young and is – is, uh, ready to take that step for him but he's he's a an interesting guy that could have a real second half takeoff I wanted to look at Bryce Young a little bit because that's another thing that should change a little bit over the course of the year acclimation right first two weeks of the year Bryce Young 4.2 per attempt yeah he looks insane but very the, but the last three weeks it's been at six and I know that that's not a high number like CJ Stroud is up there at 7.8 or whatever but I think that there is – I mean, he had a three-touchdown game. He had, He's completing over 63% of his passes. So, like, that is the other potential situation for them. Houston, Indianapolis, Chicago. The next three weeks for Carolina, there will be fantasy points scored. It's just our job as fantasy players to identify who's scoring them. Damian Pierce, the matchup is good this week. It's the matchup is very, very good. The Panthers have not been able to stop the run, which is kind of wild because they were – like coming in last year, they uh, they were good at stopping the run. Now That's they're a like, Steve Wilkes, Frank Reich change to me. Where are you yeah. at with your confidence of because look, Pierce, it should be great, but the last time we saw the Houston Texans, it turned into the Devin Singletary show with his highest you know opportunities of the year, highest snap share. He had two targets. I don't know what Pierce had in that game, but it was Pierce they, had he had one more attempt than Singletary and no targets. And a bunch – I watched it. It was three goal line chances too. So I it, I think both guys are in play, but I'd rather okay. play Pierce. Okay, you're still on his side? I'm I'm the same way. And it will be 
a a committee, the coaching staff came out and talked about using both guys a lot, and that that's going to be the new normal. So I we we saw it, and they said it. So it's true. We saw it. We said it. It's true. That is true. Nice. Dalton Schultz, uh, Tank Dell is back. Uh, confidence level that Dalton Schultz could surprise. Uh, low. I think that Tank Dell being out was a big part of Schultz's success. If I've got him and there's Taysom Hill, um, probably I'll go Taysom. Uh, I Trey had, McBride. I had those two players and I chose Taysom Hill. Okay, so you Taysom and then Trey McBride. I would go Schultz over yeah, McBride I, just because of the matchup against Baltimore, who's usually really good against tight ends. Nico and Tank Dell, both in your lineup? Yes. Thielen, of course. And, uh, and Robert, Robert Woods has been missing practice. Yeah, he, he looks is, like he's going to miss. He missed Wednesday and Thursday, trending to be out. So that that would be an uptick for Tank Robert, Dell for sure. I know there's been injuries, but Robert Woods, do you know how many targets he's on pace for this year? A lot. 122. What? Yeah, it's – I discovered this last night because I – I was starting to look at, I was like, oh, I wonder what wide receivers have a ton of targets and not a lot of touchdowns. Because I was looking for second half upside sleepers, like Godwin was, right? Like a lot of targets, no touchdowns. Jerry Judy uh, has some. But Robert Woods is sitting up at the tippy top of targets. It's wow. so bizarre. Cause, but he's not catching a lot of them. Because Nico Collins. 51% of his passes. And Tank Dell are the hotness. And Robert Woods is seeing pretty much just this, the uh, – the same opportunity as those guys, but he's not coming through. All right, quick break. Back with another matchup. The Cleveland Browns at four and two take on the Seattle Seahawks, who are also four and two. DraftKings sportsbook line here: Seattle minus three and a half. The over/under is thirty-eight. Truthfully, the most, the two most surprising four and two teams are Cleveland and Pittsburgh. They both have just like muscled their way to victory on the backs of Miles Garrett and TJ Watt. That's the second and third most surprising four and two teams. Forgot about the Steelers. That's who plays in Pittsburgh. Oh, I thought you were talking about these two teams. I thought you said the Seahawks and the Browns. No, no, no. I was saying I oh. I followed up that statement by saying Cleveland and Pittsburgh. I'm ah. gonna I'll be honest. I didn't listen to a single thing you just said. <laughs> but yes, I agree. Pittsburgh is number one and two on the list. And then Don't Cleveland's the number Steelers, three. Though. Yeah. Um <laughs> Well then I'm gonna add the Seahawks. We don't add it this podcast The anybody. Seahawks are surprising as well to me. To be four and two? Yeah. Really? Because they haven't looked good on offense. Right. They, okay, that's they've, fair. They've they've struggled a little bit in the passing game and they're they're winning. This is an interesting week. PJ Walker's gonna get the start again. We presume, right? I mean, Watson is is going to take some more time. Walker is not a good quarterback. Mm -mm. He's he's okay. He's fine. He's not the quarterback that when he's in there, like, like I have Amari Cooper, and I'm going to play Amari Cooper because he gets targeted every single week. And, you know, we had a 100-yard game with P.J. Walker the week before. But I don't go into my week saying, yay, it's P.J. Walker That's instead fair. of Deshaun Watson. But Cooper's in your lineup, and then Kareem Hunt, Kareem Hunt was limited this week. He's been kind of limited a couple weeks in a row. It looked like it was going to be all Kareem Hunt. What's the latest on Jerome Ford? So we did see video of Jerome Ford who was listed. What was it? The the low-grade the, high ankle sprain? Exactly. And he was back at practice doing drills. That doesn't mean that he is going to be ready to play, but it it means you need to be paying attention. because it, Yeah, it was mostly individual drills. Yeah, I'm watching but, him right now. But if you picked up Pierre Strong in the hopes that he could be a a, a fill in for you at the running back for an RB two or something like that, yeah, if, that's if probably Jerome, if Jerome Ford is playing, that that's that's done. Can we not make the players wear the giant Lego helmets when they're doing individual drills? I, I'm, <laughs> it just I'm seems it's like a union thing yeah. now. Uh, so pay attention to that. Cream Hunt's probably in no matter what because Jerome Ford, if he's back out there. Mm -hmm. Uh, what's worse, a high grade low ankle sprain or a low grade high ankle sprain? Oh, I think yeah, that's a, a high question. grade low ankle sprain would be worse. Okay, Elijah Moore, seven point two worthless targets per game. Mm -hmm. Don't play him. And uh, yeah, sell sell him, trade him on the basis that he gets a lot of targets. It will work out better than playing him. On the other side, Kenneth Walker didn't practice for a second consecutive day with the calf injury, while Zach Charbonnet is a full practice. You could have Zach Charbonnet's debut opportunity against a terrible matchup. Yeah, yeah, it is. It is unfortunate 
the the Cleveland Browns have just been so good against running backs. Last week they they had some cracks in the armor, but I'm still trusting what we've seen on the 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 whole of the season with the Browns. If if Walker doesn't play and Charbonnet is active, which I, Charbonnet should be active, he's practicing in full. Then I'm starting Charbonnet. Uh, he's a quality player. It's not like you're. I mean, are you not starting Kenneth Walker because it's a bad matchup if he's active? No, you're going to start Kenneth Walker in any matchup. And I, I think Charbonnet is good enough where he, if he is alone without Walker, I, I'll treat him the same way, even if he's not well, as good. Would you play him over Damian Pierce? Yes. Yes. In, in the because of the exclusivity. Correct. Yep. Okay. I think that makes sense. I think I'd take this ceiling opportunity, and he can catch the ball. Yeah. Geno Smith is kind of off people's uh, board this week. I think it makes sense. D the defense for the Browns, yes, last week Minshew had a good one. Two of those were rushing touchdowns. Well, and you and might not have Tyler Lockett. Lucky passing touchdowns. You might not have Tyler Lockett. He did not uh, practice Wednesday. He did not practice Thursday. This is a hamstring. If you've got a hamstring problem keeping you out of a Thursday practice, it, it – feels unlikely to play the, oh, the did he miss thursday last week with so a hamstring what's funny is i think he actually missed friday last week with a hamstring so it, it's I'll, I'll i'll look that up right now but it was it was one of the more, more unique situations i've seen where late in the week you miss a full practice with a hamstring and then play yeah let's figure out what he happened last what happened last week is he because of the matchup and because of the fact that targets will be distributed across metcalf JSN, Lockett, and company. Is he? Is it worth just taking him off your board and not worrying about it? Like, there's enough options out there, like Rashi Rice or... I think if you have a, a decent option, I would pivot out of Lockett. My bigger question is, how do you guys feel about JSN? Not just that like, great. Yeah, th this isn't the matchup for it. Um, it to, to verify, last week, uh, Lockett was limited on Wednesday and Thursday, did not participate in practice on Friday, and then did play. So you, right. don't, you don't know what you're, you, All know, right. he, you know, he's maybe going to play then this week if he did the same kind of thing last week, but with the bad matchup, with the aggravated hamstring, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and bench lock it for any decent option. Kansas City is six and one. They take on the Denver Broncos who are two and five. The DraftKings Sportsbook line is Kansas City minus seven. The over-under is 47 to me. And I know the game's in Denver. Like, that's a shocking line to me. It is. I think seven is... And the Broncos played them tough last time, too, on the road. Now they haven't beaten them for 16 consecutive games. That is... That's a lot of games. That's an insane streak. That's, that's eight, eight years, right? Yes. We were... Unless there was a, a playoff game. This was like the beginning of the fantasy footballers. was the last time we probably saw that happen. Are, are we the reason? No, it's Mahomes. Oh, okay. <laughs> you think? You think? I think it's more Mahomes. Uh, what? Give bit, us a little, a little bit, bit of credit yeah, here. A little bit. Okay. A little bit. A little bit. Mahomes. Yeah. A little bit us. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. Obama was president. Our kids were way younger. Patrick Mahomes has never lost an a an AFC West road game ever. What? He's in the AFC West. That's impossible. Yeah. So it is Mahomes. Yeah, it's him. It's not us. You play him. You play Pacheco. I'm now, convinced. But <laughs> now Pacheco has been uh, on on start of the week list for two consecutive weeks and hasn't delivered the big performance this week. It, it's the same story. I mean, he's going to get a bunch of work, but he but RB fourteen, RB thirteen. That's yeah. He, I mean, it's he, fine. He's been a top fifteen running back for five That's straight just a weeks. Start. Yeah, yeah, sure. It's it's just a start, but he is someone that is in all of your lineups. What about Rashi Rice? Because because there's a lot of excitement. You know, you have the built-in intangibles of, you know, young athletic rookie with upside. It's not like Robert Woods is getting more snaps every week, and you're like, ah, oh, it's Robert Woods. Like this is a player that has probably more to give. Yeah, I mean, he went from thirty percent snaps, forty-nine percent snaps, fifty-nine percent snaps. That's the that's what you need to see to have the confidence to put him in there now. The matchup is okay. It's not It's not like the best matchup in the world just because Denver is a bad defense. Sometimes that backfires on wide receivers and just the passing game in general because you run a lot successfully. Um, but I, I'm totally willing to start Rushy Rice because it, it appears like he's going to be Patrick Mahomes' number one wide receiver. 
it's kind of wild. Even when you count the insanity that happened to Denver earlier in the year, they're only the 17th best matchup against wide receivers. In fact, the last three weeks, they put up the best performance, and then they were in the top half for two consecutive weeks. So this is where that 70-point game is going to start to distort the truth about your matchups. So it's a good point. Now, those snaps for Rashi Rice, they came at the expense of Kadarius Toney, who's down to 19%. Too high. I believe it is too high. Now, Kelsey, I would play him. I mm, I guess the matchup's okay. Russell Wilson, Javante Williams, Jerry Judy, Cortland Sutton. Now, Sutton Sutton has like five touchdowns this year. <laughs> it's, I looked I, at this. It's five. This, this guy. It's the fakest. This guy. It is the fakest, like – quality fantasy asset of the season right now. He 850 is, and 12 is his pace. Yeah. Uh, on 70 uh, catches. He's currently the wide receiver 21. He's been a pretty good start most weeks. And I'm just, uh, it's like, but it's not real. And it's not going to keep <laughs> happening. I would play him over Judy. I would play him over Judy as Which well. Which is something yes. we weren't saying earlier in the year. But I, you know, it's one of those things where a lot of times you look for expected fantasy points uh, that's a really we, we've got an article that comes out every week talking about the expected fantasy points versus the fantasy points being scored and he's the he's the poster child right now for he shouldn't be scoring as much as the opportunities he's being given so I'm still not I'm not putting him in like he's the wide receiver 21 by any means to me the biggest storyline on Denver and I want to throw this to you guys for for broader perspective when I was looking up like wide receivers with a lot of targets they haven't scored I flipped over to the running backs earlier, and I was like, running backs with a lot of carries that haven't scored. Javante Williams is at the top of that list. Like He's not gotten into the end zone even one time this year in the passing game or in the ground game. You know, it, it's fair to say like you're going to come back slower off of a major injury. The last two weeks has been over five a carry. Jaleel McLaughlin's opportunities have gone down. Like, you know, when you talk about second-half sleepers, is, is this a player in contention? Because I haven't been... Mm -mm. I haven't been impressed, like eyeball tests with Williams, but the numbers are saying he's performing at a better efficiency level. Yeah, I mean, I. It, so did you say no? I said no because I don't believe in this offense as a whole, and he hasn't really looked special. And with McLaughlin coming on, I think that McLaughlin looks like the better back. So but he's coming off now. I I believe that right now you're you're talking about getting a at best 50 percent of the running back room on a bad offense so I'm just I I don't see the I don't see the path for a big explosive great second half of the year for Javante uh, obviously you know more time away from the injury is good and that's the pathway but I'm just not excited about the Broncos offense is that because they have one carry inside the 10 all year Ooh. That is a good example of why I'm not excited about the Broncos' offense. But they also can't get there when Cortland Sutton's getting all them touchdowns. You know That's what I true. mean? Just like I have more optimism than Jason for Javante over the second half. I, to me, I, I think it looks like we're going to narrow it down that it's going to be Javante and McLaughlin, and P. Ryan will be just a kind of a bit part player in the offense. Uh, P. Ryan has not looked good either, and I agree that Javante doesn't – he still does not look like the Javante that got drafted, but he, I, I think over the second half the opportunities are going to go up. It's weird that P. Ryan jumped ahead of McLaughlin last week. It was weird. It, it, it wasn't a massive jump. I think it was like 25 to 20%. 17, yeah. yeah. So, it, But it was like – it just seemed like they were ready to completely make the transition away from – P. Ryan to McLaughlin, and then last week it didn't happen. We'll keep an eye on it this week. But also, all of this is irrelevant because this is a terrible matchup. It sounds like somebody's boarding up like uh, <laughs> their houses outside of our studio right now. We're getting ready for the, the Is there zombies. a storm coming? Al, can you board I, I up think, some I, stuff for us? There's somebody doing some work on the roof. Huh. That's mm. not Santa? Ideal. Not yet, Mike. Oh. Wait till Wednesday. Yeah, we're almost Christmas there. season starts <laughs> Wednesday. The Baltimore Ravens are five and two. They take on the one and six Arizona Cardinals. They are who we thought they were. So just for perspective, like Baltimore is nine and a half point road favorites here, whereas Kansas City is seven point road favorites in the previous game. The over under is forty four and a half. 
Baltimore's offense looked unquestionably dominant yeah. last yeah. week. It was the first time. Do that. It was the first time they looked that way. It, yeah. One, yes. Very. But it was fantastic. I mean, they just they smashed the Lions. Now, a group of Ravens, to give you some more bird facts. Oh, uh, it's, oh, it's a murder, right? A, a group of Ravens is called an unkindness. What? Unk it's a murder of crows, Mike. Oh, crows. The crows. first time you failed at bird yeah. knowledge. Oh, man. I hold I hold up my bird knowledge in such esteem. So, but it is interesting that like crows, which are dark black birds, yeah. it's a murder, and then the Ravens are dark birds, and they're an unkindness. So it's like when dark What's birds- What's a group of doves? I'm on it. Take a look. Peace. A group of cardinals can be called a college. Oh, they're very smart. Why do we need so many words? Yeah, why for, can't you just for groups? Yeah. But uh, in this one, I will say this may be a murder of cardinals. Uh, that's uh, how, uh, I see where you're yeah, I mean, that's, oh, this well is going to be bad. Professional. The, the cardinals at this point, like they were barely capable of. Having enough, like they barely had enough pieces to move the ball, and it was an impressive beginning of the year. But then you remove James Conner from the offense, and you remove Zach Ertz, who I know it's Zach Ertz. But if you keep taking pieces away from from an LM, you know, an offense that doesn't have a lot of pieces, there's just not a lot of upside. Yeah, the the Baltimore Ravens defense has just been very very good all season. Even when they've dealt with injuries, they've been very good. They're a super well coached team, like always without the talent on the Cardinal side of the ball. I mean, you could start Hollywood Brown. He hasn't been good the last two weeks. That's what I was going to ask. But the, but the opportunities are still there. The talent is there. Um, I, you know, I I believe I would still Revenge be game. I, I believe Ooh. I would still be starting Hollywood Brown. But outside of him, I was going to ask, the, there's nobody. The, when you're looking at the Ravens' defense, you know, just, uh, over the last six weeks, worst matchup for quarterbacks, six worst for wide receivers, third for tight ends. And yet, 18th against running backs. And people are trying to find guys to put in there. And Amari DiMarcato, after the, the full fab dump to get him, and then he did not get opportunities, even though he was running routes and, and played the most snaps. Last week, Keonta Ingram with no opportunities. And DiMarcato, 13 carries, 58 yards, had five targets. He no. had 80% of snaps. I mean, he was, I mean as he a, was like, So if you have like an emergency... Then you could get him in there. Oh, that's busted. Yeah. I, I, would you play? Uh, I kind of like it. I kind of like Mike, it. What? Mike's all right. I, I kind of like it. But the the point being, if it feels feels bad, but the numbers were that is that's full workhorse. Single Terry or Demarcado in this matchup? <sighs> Man. And I'm going to ask the same yeah. question with Pierre Strong. People's people's desperation plays. I, I would go Demarcado over both of those options. Yeah. I both of them. The, the problem with, with, with Singletary and DiMarcado is both of them could vanish in snaps. It, like, it could just transfer right back over to a different running back. But I would, of them, I would take the chance on DiMarcado. Trey McBride is in play if you're desperate at tight end to me this sure. week. I know that the Ravens are very good against the tight end position. But in a non-competitive game, I think there's just going to be... Like, the Cardinals throw the ball to the tight end position yeah. more than almost anybody. I still am taking a shot there. second. I think... You, if you're in a full PPR, sure. I don't think McBride has a great game, but I could see him with you know eight or nine targets. That being said, this this seemed like a pretty good week for picking up tight ends off of waivers. Schultz was regularly out there. Ferg, uh, Ferg Kincaid Daddy was, was hopefully out there. He played Kincaid. Uh, so while I agree with what you're saying about Trey McBride, I think there are better options available. Lamar, of course. Gus Edwards, my start of the week. Zay Flowers, my start of the week, and. You know, you can you can kick the like. Would you rather play Demarcado or take a shot with Justice Hill, with them as heavy favorites? Ooh, uh, that one's I, I'd probably I'd probably play Justice Hill because I would go I'd, Justice Hill. I'd be afraid the Cardinals are going to throw another random yes. back out there. Yeah, I would take fifty percent of snaps against the Cardinals than eighty percent of snaps for the Cardinals. <laughs> and a really important one, Jason: Mark Andrews or Travis Kelsey? If you had the choice. <laughs> Just a classic start sit conundrum for a um, lot of teams. I'll go. Yeah. Who 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 do you have in the, the dynasty matchup? I've got Mark Andrews. Yeah. Who do you have? Travis Kelsey. Okay. Cincinnati's three and three taking on the five and two San Francisco 49ers. The DK Sportsbook line now, San Francisco minus four. So 
I believe this went from five and a half to three and a half, mm-hmm. and now it's at four, which tells me maybe Brock Purdy's <laughs> expected to play. The over under is forty three and a half. Obviously, you know they move the lines based on betting. So here we are. the The over under is down, and so the expectation of of kind of a bigger performance for the offenses has changed. You know, San Francisco was on fire. Five straight games of thirty plus points. The last two games, it's been seventeen. Cincinnati's defense is not a slouch defense. I know it hasn't been great uh, this year, but they've had a couple of big performances. You know, the funk that the 49ers are in, are are you worried about it when it comes to players like Brandon Ayuk, who should be alone, should have opportunities? Is he a full start? He's a full start, yeah. He's he's a full start for me as well. The You know, it's, I don't know at what point... In the game, the uh, Brock Purdy's head injury happened, and so this is just full speculation. But like Brock Purdy looked not great toward like at the end of the game, where it was should have been some easy completions to especially Brandon Ayuk. So I'm curious if if that played a part. You know, yeah. Let me let me try to find a tweet. Is there actual numbers on it? Yeah, there were there were numbers on it, and uh, here here we go. he was 19-24, 252, and a touchdown with zero interceptions prior to the concussion play. Um, afterwards, he was 2 of 6 for 20 yards and two INTs. Yeah, there you go. It And, we, I mean, we saw that from Tua last year. Very inter- That's actually really interesting because there were a couple plays that I was shocked he missed. Not even the interception ones, but like Ayuk on an in route. Yes. Uh, it was confusing. It was imprecise mm-hmm. and it was now, Trey Lance stuff and hey hey take it I'm easy sorry. I'm sorry uh but it's uh, it, it's one of those things where you, what is happening I can't I can't explain what happened to Brock Purdy at the end of the game well now we have a little bit high of hindsight that we can add in there the San Francisco defense is a very dangerous one the last couple of games were on the road now they're back home against Cincinnati and the offense for Cincinnati has been uh well not what we hope for. Warming up? Maybe. It's I tough it's to warm. Warming it's warming up, but like... They're not heating up. Like the temperature of this offense, is it going to be warmer at the end of this game or not? Because the 49ers are formidable. I don't want to face them if I'm in offense, but are you... Like, is this a get-right game for the 49ers? A get-right game for the 49ers? Yeah, I mean, because if you believe that, if you believe that this is the kind of game where a good team bounces back from a couple of losses on the road... They come home, the crowd, and then they just dominate. Like, that's what a good team does. I don't think they're going to flat-out dominate the Cincinnati Bengals. They've they've been struggling. The Bengals have been getting a little bit better, and Joe Burrow should be the healthiest he's been all season. T. Higgins should be the healthiest he's been all season. I think this will be a battle, um, and I'm willing to start players on both sides of the ball uh, I'm not afraid. All the normals? All the normals. I'm not afraid of starting Joe Burrow just because this is a tough matchup on the road. It's it's hard, but he is good. He's got his weapons. I'm also willing to start T. Higgins, who hasn't been good yet, but the the reports um, from this bye week and, and practice were that T. Higgins is finally looking himself and that that's very important and needed for the Bengals. Are you wanting – like, are you going to be – aggressive in trying to go get T Higgins right now because the value is low or do you feel like this is a I I can let it ride for one more week of no of I, low production and then then try and scoop him up no I, I I would scoop him up now even though the 49ers have a great defense they are if you adjust for schedule they're 23rd they average giving up 31.2 fantasy points to the opposing wide receivers so T. Higgins could have a fine game this week, and then people will be much less hesitant to trade him affordably. The Bears are 2-5. and five. They travel to take on the Los Angeles Chargers in Sunday night football. Tyson Bagent will get the start. Bilbo. <laughs> against Justin Herbert, and if the Bears win the ball game, they have a better record than the Chargers. <laughs> oh, yeah. What's going to happen? I did not realize that I was rooting for the Bears. The DraftKings Sportsbook line is Los Angeles minus eight and a half at home. The over-under is 46 and a half. Three of the four losses for the Chargers have been one-score games. That's their specialty. That's what they do, man. Herbert is the quarterback eight on the year right now at home. He's been the quarterback five, five, and six. He's going to be played. You're going to play him against the 
Bears defense. It's yep. not been a good defense. Austin Eckler, you know, Jason mentioned the fact he was a little squeaky. Mm -hmm. There's and, a lot of frustration in Los Angeles. And you, you've you got a situation here where, I mean, you saw the splits last year when Keenan or Mike Williams was missing. The amount of targets that went to Austin Eckler were outrageously high. Well, you've got no Mike Williams. You've got no practicing Joshua Palmer. If you're down both those players, Austin Eckler's going to be used in the passing game a ton. They just won't even have a choice. I can't. Last week he had two targets, which is like the only time he's had two targets in like three years. Mm -hmm. So I understand him being frustrated about that. That being said, Joshua Kelly had the big run. Eckler hasn't quite looked himself. Keenan Allen is in must start. The problem here is Joshua Palmer. Like I was, I'm just going to be transparent. I was thrilled to have spent fab and picked up Josh Palmer. Mm -hmm. And then he goes out and you flex him and he puts up over a hundred yards. He didn't score and he still had a big week. It's like, I've got, I felt like I got myself a guy. Yeah. No sign of injury on the field whatsoever through the game. Not that I saw. Now didn't practice Wednesday, Thursday. And it's a knee issue, so it's not something you uh, – it's either right or it's not right. You're not going to want to play through it and, and make it worse. I mean, is there – is he – if he practices Friday, you're fine? Yeah, yeah. If, if he gets back to a full practice, then you go, okay. Well, limited. Limited, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be a little worried, but he's going to be out there. If he's – if he is – The problem is it's Sunday night. Yeah, I mean, you've got to have another pivot option. But oh, if if we know he's a pivot gonna, option out there, it, huge, huge, oh, huge. You want to yeah, do that? It's gonna be huge. I think I would do it. I think I would. Do oh, it. I would do that pivot. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I would do that pivot. I mean, the the Bears aren't a good defense, and so they the Herbert should be able to still get it done with limited weapons against the Bears. I'd love to say, well, this opens up a window for Gerald Everett, except for he's been limited with an injury, so it takes. They could dominate on the ground in this game and, and not do as much through the air. Deonta Foreman, Roshan Johnson. Roshan's going to play. Oh, He's man. out of the concussion protocol. He's listed as healthy. Darrington Evans been involved. Travis Homer's healthy. Deonta Foreman, he scored last week three times. And looked great. Mm -hmm. He was very good. I'm starting Deonta Foreman this week with Roshan active. That's that's how Single I... Single Terry or Foreman? Foreman. Yeah, Foreman. Kareem Hunt or Foreman? That one's tough. I, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna. I'm gonna go Foreman. Based on our website, Foreman managers are panicking because there are oh, tons of it. start sit questions. Yeah, it's it's an Im it's and it's an not zero situation. percent chance that Roshan would get a bunch of work, and we're like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why you were getting playing time before. There is the uh, there is the outcome here where Roshan comes out and is the starter, plays ahead of. Foreman and Foreman is a backup. That that certainly could happen. I I project that the opposite happens. I think Foreman will be the first and second down back, and that Roshan will be the the change of back, uh, change of pace back, the the two minute drill guy, and that Foreman is the one you want for fantasy purposes and has the better chance at a touchdown. The wide receiver five on the year, DJ Moore, the good over the last two weeks without Justin Fields for the majority of that is that he had seventeen targets. The bad is that he didn't finish in the top 24 in either week. That he only had 50 yards in each game? Yeah, the yards, uh, the average depth of target for Tyson Bajant, Bilbo himself, uh, 2.1. Ew, that is, hmm, that smells like garbage. <laughs> that's that's, that's yes, some stink, it is, stinky, it is. stinky caca. <laughs> now, you can't blame him because they might have just built the offense to protect him from himself. himself yes. Yeah, I mean... I would not expect Hobbits to have a higher A dot. No, no, no. To be no. fair, yeah, they're they're pretty small, and a lot of passes get knocked down at the line of scrimmage. Yeah, I mean, how far can a Hobbit really throw? About two point four <laughs> yards. Is that what is that what it was? <laughs> DJ Moore's in your lineup, no matter what. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. With those targets, it's uh, doubtful that you have a better option. Okay, if Josh Palmer was active, DJ Moore or Josh Palmer? DJ Moore. Okay, just making sure the Raiders. Three and four taking on the Detroit Lions at five and two. The DraftKings Sportsbook line, Detroit minus eight. The over under is 46. Jared Goff is Mike's start of the week since the beginning of 2022. Goff is averaging 27.3 fantasy points per game at home. Yep. I mean, I know I've used the phrasing of get right game many times this week. But here's another one. I mean, Detroit 
got absolutely embarrassed. And I do trust Dan Campbell to get them ready to perform at home. You know, Amon Ra, he's going to be back out there. He's been dominating the targets. Jamison Williams should get more work with Marvin Jones out. It's hard for me to see this game going differently than Vegas has it going. Yeah, this is this is a team with a lot of pride who's looked great this year, and they got humiliated, absolutely humiliated. Now they're coming back home in a winnable matchup. You really do expect them to put pedal to the metal, to not take the Raiders lightly for this. It's not a trap game anymore when you're coming off of a brutal beatdown. So I, I, I agree with Andy, who agrees with Vegas. I The Lions should really roll here. Is is Josh Reynolds a spot start for you? For sure, yeah. Okay. Josh Reynolds has been pretty solid a bunch of times this year um, with – you know, Marvin Jones retiring, that's going to open up more, you know, just opportunities to be on the field for the, I'm, I'm guessing that it's going to be spread around a little bit. Jamison Williams snaps should rise. You're going to pay attention to that this week. Um, but it, it, it's also an opportunity for the other wide receivers to rise as well. I'd play Reynolds over Jamison. And, yeah, me and, too. And I was really disappointed that this was the Monday game and couldn't be part of the slate for our next segment because I wanted Josh Reynolds in my lineup. On the other side of the ball, you have uh, Fat Thor. <laughs> Josh Jacobs is – I'm so happy you've embraced Fat Thor. There's nothing you can do. Yeah. I mean, he he, he was Fat <laughs> Thor. It's like it was done. He is the RB15 on this season. Yeah. He gets more opportunities per game than almost anyone. Yep. He will get a pile of them in this game. Oh, Even yeah. Fat Thor yeah. was still super strong. Yeah. yeah. Like, he's I still mean, Thor. He's still Thor. He's just out, out of, of shape. shape. Yeah. <laughs> but Devontae Adams and Josh Jacobs and, and Jacoby Myers, That's it's uh, your it's your triple starts there for the Raiders. And, and Jimmy Garoppolo is expected to play, which does, you know. That matters. He is very good at throwing it to just a couple of people, and I love that about him. Mm -hmm. And so handsome. He is that, too. Uh, <laughs> anything else from this game, Sam Laporta? Of course you play him. Yes, agreed. Uh, I, and I think Michael Mayer. Uh, no, I, so hear me out. Meh. I totally understand the hesitancy. However, the snaps were still very high last week at 71%. Yeah. So he has, he has made the transition to being their primary tight end. Not every tight end is going to be good every single week. He wasn't great last week, but I don't think that means that the he's... Raiders were not great last week. Would right. you play McBride or would you play Mayer? Because I I'm I'd, on the McBride side. I'd go Mayer. Okay, Jason. That's tough. The matchup is I, I, with tight ends. I like to focus on the matchup more than other positions, so I'll go Mayer. Breaking news: A couple of injury updates for you. Zay Jones is out. Deontay Johnson says he's going to play. And Kyler Murray on whether he'll be activated this week. Jonathan Gannon said, quote, we'll see. Oh, man. We'll see. What if Kyler comes back this week? It's not going to. It's not happening. It's not going to happen. What if he does? See, now, this one actually makes sense. Like To I, say we'll see. Yes. Like, I was uh, very vocal in my opposition to Jonathan Gannon being a buffoon at the beginning of the year saying, I don't know who's going to start. Is it going to be Toon or Dobbs? Ridiculous. But if a team doesn't know if they're playing Josh Dobbs or Kyler Murray, that's a very different situation. One more update for you. The Jerome Ford surprised the organization with how he ran on Thursday despite the sprained ankle. After testing it during practice, the Browns are listing him as questionable. It's okay. zero, zero or two games. I mean, Jason was, zero or Jason three. said oh, it. three. I'm sorry. Yeah, After three. Jason said that, more reports came out and said he's missing at least two. And now he's a threat to miss zero. What do you think actually happens? I think he plays. I think if he's at practice looking like he looks, um, I, I, Pierre Strong is – I think they want Ford there. As someone facing Kareem Hunt, this is very good uh, news. Kareem very Hunt. good news. Kareem Hunt also not listed on the injury report. Great. So he's good to go. Didn't have to tell me that. <laughs> I didn't tell you. I was telling the people. Fantasy Face Off, presented by DraftKings. Well, well, well. If Mr. Yeah. If number two. Number two. Oh, it, we ended got up to, at number three this year. We got to replace that number two. 
We do. Oh, there is. Oh, Arthur. There is. There is oh. a new b hole amongst the ranks. Shall we officially declare oh, a new yes. b a new b hole? Yes. yes. From the ashes. <laughs> from the from the ashes. <laughs> the Falcon b hole will rise. Uh, Adam Gase, congratulations! Yeah. This is a big day for you. You're we're, off the hook. We're removing the number two from your moniker, and we are appropriating that to a true b hole. A true, true butthole. <laughs> I mean. <laughs> Arthur Smith, you stink. Kyle, <laughs> Kyle is going as Arthur Smith. What for Halloween? Nice. Okay. All right, dude. I love it. That's that's a good one. We better see it. Um. All right. Into the fantasy faceoff. Jason and all. Jason narrowly defeated me last week. Mike at the bottom, and I so was, uh, not narrowly defeated. <laughs> you were. <laughs> I was just defeated. broadly defeated. <laughs> Let's spin that wheel, Mike. Wheel of Shame. All right, let's see what you boys got. Let's spin the wheel. I saw a Sharknado on there. Yeah, that's rainy like day. Cowboy. Happy Viking. trees. Mom. Mom's, mom's the, the word. word? Mom. Mom's the word. Mom. Mom. Oh, that's a you. I got mom's bad eyes. The word. All right, All right so Papa on. Josh is coming out onto the side. On I don't hear. Hat off. Oh, yep, hat off. What, hat I, I guess off. this is just going to be. Oh, looks like you're getting a mummy face. <laughs> looks like you're He's getting a live mummy wrap. A live mummy wrap. So um, you are just going to I'd appreciate have your, if I could breathe. I, I don't think breathing is too super necessary, but I will say he does need to see, but barely. If you can make sure that that goes. Um, you know, right. <laughs> this this looks like you're going so tight. Just yeah, cut cut his circulation off. There you go. This Little is different. Face. Um, so while this happens, we're gonna have to reveal lineup live. Because mm -hmm. yeah. this mummy is gonna take maybe 40, 50 minutes to get done. <laughs> yeah, just go right over that nose. There we go. Yeah, baby, cover that face. We've never had um, Mike. How is this? Unpleasant. <laughs> Unpleasant. <laughs> well. You look stupid, so that's cool. Um, all let's right, start let's with the start lineups. With the lineups. Okay. Andy, who do you got? I'm going with my quarterback. <laughs> what is happening? Just keep going. Get it's the whole too roll. tight. My face. <laughs> it's too tight. <laughs> oh, baby. Hang on, we gotta go lower. I'm going right. Lamar oh, Lamar with Lamar Jackson. Oh, Lamar. Lamar Jackson at quarterback. What is happening? Spinning up. Eighty one hundred. <laughs> Yeah. Mike is maybe gonna suffocate. Oh, uh, this is. I, I'm okay. He's okay. I can breathe. All okay. Right. Um, so eighty-one hundred. Lamar it's, Jackson. It's 8, difficult to speak. <laughs> Who's your quarterback, Mike? Lamar Jackson. Oh well, that makes three of us. No! I have Lamar Jackson at eighty-one hundred. Well, that sucks. He's playing the Cardinals. Yeah, that's that. He was. <laughs> you sound like you look. Yeah, and he's my, got this little hair tuft shooting my, up the top. My nose is yeah, it's, <laughs> nose, it's your nose. That's his nose is part. broken. <laughs> it's like shattered. Um, I will never recover. Uh, Christian McCaffrey and Amar Alvin Kamara are my two running backs. Oh my goodness! 90, Christian McCaffrey, Christian McCaffrey, and Alvin Kamara, so ninety-two hundred and seventy-three hundred. Oh, I got Alvin Kamara. I'm in on that. Yeah. <laughs> I also have. Isaiah Pacheco, yeah, at sixty one hundred, yeah. taking I, on the Denver Broncos. Yeah, I've got Alvin Kamara at seventy three hundred, and then Brees Hall, baby. I love my Brees uh, going against the Giants fifty nine hundred. He is, I think, mispriced. So am I the only McCaffrey you manager? Are the yeah, only you're, McCaffrey. You're I like the sound of that. My wide receivers: Jamar Chase at eighty one hundred. What? What? How do you have Jamar Chase, Lamar Jackson, and Christian McCaffrey? Zay Alvin Flowers Kamara? at fifty six hundred. Your lineup sounds. Great. And then uh, Wandale Robinson at thirty seven hundred. That's uh, not as good anymore. Well, I don't Wandale's, know. Wandale, I like Wandale. Yeah, I don't. I don't mind that. Uh, my my wide receivers are Christian Kirk at fifty nine hundred, Christian Watson at fifty one hundred, and I really wanted to get Christian Olave in there, but I couldn't afford him. So uh, I've got Tank Dell. Okay, Tank, Tank okay. Dell's forty nine hundred. All right, uh, I have, Mike. I have Christian Kirk, my start of the week. His nose is shattered. <laughs> Guys, I mean, the it's, it's, it's sideways. It's, it's really it's the jaw that is yeah. really starting to hurt. Yeah. Uh, Drake London. We'll take, get you some more bandages. Thank you. Drake London takes on the Tennessee Titans at 5,100. And then 
Me? Oh. I'm paying up for the stupid old man, Adam Thielen, at 6,600. So if he does not come through, I will never forgive him. Delightful. Uh, my final three? Trey McBride is my tight end at 2,800. Yeah. yeah. Brandon Powell is my flex at 3,200 yeah, okay. for the Minnesota Vikings in the the defense, well, I had to spend the bottom, but it's my upset of the week. I'm taking the Patriots defense at 2,000 against Miami. Oh, wow. Wow. Okay, I have uh, at tight end, I've got Ferg Daddy. Uh, I spent a little bit more there at 3,600, but I love the matchup against the Rams. I've got the Falcons defense against the Tennessee Titans and Banana Rama. Hopefully he can turn the ball over a few times. And at my flex, I actually spent up. I'm going in a bad matchup. With Jonathan Taylor at oh. 6,200, I think the transition is made this week, Yep, and he is not going to be a 6,200 priced type of player in the <laughs> I, future. He's, he's got Owen Wilson's nose. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, I don't blame you on that. <laughs> I don't blame you what on that. What were those three again? Say so, it real quick. Uh, Ferguson at tight end, yeah. Jonathan Taylor in yeah. my flex, and the Atlanta Falcons defense against Banana Rama. Okay. I, I have Trey McBride at tight end. Because at Flex, I have Brees Hall, so you are not live with him. Mm. And then I had to decide which of the bottom defenses do I want. I went with the Broncos. <laughs> Against the Chiefs. <laughs> yeah. Wow, you went to the bottom. I went, well, they were both the same price, but it was like, hey, they're at home, and they played them tough last time. You really uh, – Mike was probably much more comfortable at the number two position than yeah. the number three. This yeah. doesn't yeah. seem like a great one. No. I love it. Uh, that was Fantasy Faceoff presented by our friends at DraftKings Sportsbook. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now and use the promo code BALLERS to get $150 in bonus bets instantly when you place a $5 bet on any football game. That is the code BALLERS only at DraftKings Sportsbook. You can join Mike and his broken nose on Sunday Live. <laughs> I'm not sure I'll be alive. BallersLive.com. And, of course, check out the DFS Pass right now at DFSPass.com. Play along with us this week. See if you can beat the Ballers over on DraftKings. That is going to do it. Thank you for joining us. We'll let Mike escape from this uh, Free me. pretty terrible punishment. <laughs> Goodbye, everybody. Have a good weekend. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.